One of the things I'll talk about in open grass reads is we don't teach any coverage. Um, I don't spend any time on the whiteboard with the quarterback teaching uh, the different coverages that he might see. Um, I, I think it's kind of a waste of time with the way the brain learns uh, how you teach coverage. Um, with that being said, why do we do this? It's because it allows our offense to adjust with ease. Uh, each week we don't have to worry about putting different things in and how this is going to affect. We teach things in a brain picture. Um, it takes advantage of the uh, defense's game plan because we can easily adjust to the sight of distance and depth based on coverage and landmarks more so than we can worrying about um, the philosophy behind different coverages. It makes our quick game get even faster for the quarterback in processing it. Um, it also lets us know if the quarterback is, is seeing the defense and reacting to what he sees. Um, the defense also has to uh, defend the entire field. When we're running a sideline concept, um, a sideline triangle to one side, we get a lot of 4 2 5 teams that want to put their strength, their defense to our back. And the way we do things on the back side out of 2 by 2 it makes them defend the whole field with some choice stuff I'll go through. Um, the sideline triangle, like I said before, becomes a full field play. Um, it allows, our off, allows me as offensive coordinator um, and my quarterback to create tags like a blank canvas. Um, we always have a man and zone beater built in backside. As I said earlier, I spend no time in chalk talks. Um, I teach from a field perspective. Um, as you can see here on the screen at the top, I've got a play drawn up in huddle. Um, playbook, which is great um, if you're kind of wanting to just introduce something. But as far as teaching and installing it into the mind, I use the bottom. The bottom is what we see because it has depth, um, it has width, um, it, has, it has barriers, such as the defensive lineman and where the coverage is set. This is how your mind processes exactly how um, you're going to react to something. And I'll go through the slow and fast process and how we teach it. The slow process is what we call the pre-snap. It is all rule-based rationale through your brain. Um, it is controlled and it is a process-based um, uh, thinking. It uh, is conscious and it's engaging the quarterback. It forces the quarterback to use his eyes and brain to come to a decision based on factual evidence. Um, it takes the variables out of the brain to get to a point of execution um, and it forces the player to think and process. One of the things I pride myself on is you can see my quarterback in the film looking left and right pre-snap and that's not something he's just doing because he sees it on TV. He's actually looking where can he take advantage and what the defense is trying to do. After all this happens, uh, we go into what we call the fast process, which is the post-snap. And that is all reaction-based. It's unconscious, it's automatic, it's associative by nature, by what you've done in the slow process, it's gonna, it's gonna associate it in the fast process. It's more concrete and specific because things are moving now. Um, but it happens at a very rapid pace. We're talking, you know, 2.9 to 3.2 seconds, we got to make a decision. Um, so, and one of the things this also does, it exposes the mastery of the coaching and the practice we do with our quarterbacks. One of the ideas in the fast process I'll explain to you is blinking your eyes. Your body blinks its eyes automatically because your eyes need wetting. Okay, in order to not blink, you have to tell your brain not to blink. That is the difference between the slow and the fast process. If you see a quarterback on film and he's hung up or he's patting the ball or he's got happy feet, it's because he did not do his pre-snap slow process and looking to see what he, how they're trying to defend the play. That is one of the biggest things. So in order to get the fast process, what we like, what we all see, what we stand up and cheer for, you have to be able to do this slow process and I'll go through how we do it. One of the things I stole from Coach Hal Mummy and one of the things that he got from actually Dennis Erickson during the Miami days was the walkthrough drill. And I've talked about this in other clinics, but I'll go through this from a concept standpoint now. Um, we take and put players either on a field or in a gym um, we're going to take a, a tennis ball and put it in the quarterback's hands and get in a formation. Put a defense on the field, um, basically a secondary, the back seven, and we're going to get them in any kind of coverage we want to teach that day. And what we do is if, we, if we're putting in the corner concept, we're going to go through the corner concept, and we're going to ask the quarterback to ask questions. Where's my first progression? All right. Is where that route going, is it covered or not, based on pre-snap leverage? Where's my 2-3 read? All right, who's the flat player? Okay, and where that is. And then we're going to ask him to look backside and see if our choice routes on the backside is a better thing to go with. And sometimes it is and we throw that. We can also tag that if he likes something to tag. And what we'll do is we'll go through, and that's his slow process. And what we'll do is let him say hut, and then we're going to have him throw the tennis ball to who is going to be open based on the coverage. Now, in order to understand how some things work, we still are going to peak that corner no matter what. 